Anatomy, physiology. Structure, function. Okay, so autotrophs have to have this molecule called a porphyrin ring to convert energy. Now, primary consumers need to have specific anatomy to be able to take this energy and to convert it into the energy that they do. And then the, the secondary consumers that consume the primary consumers need to have a specific anatomy in order to do that function. Everything's got a function. So it turns out that we're primary consumers. How do we know that? Anatomy and physiology. Our jaws go this way, they, go ro they rotate. They go up and down and they go sideways. We have cheeks and we have lips that are full that allow us to keep the stuff in our mouth while we're chewing it, unlike the dog who's chewing on grass, it would fall. It falls out, the dog has to keep picking it up and their jaws can only go up and down. So we're very different, designed to consume differently. The dogs and the cats and the elephants don't have to ask this question. You know why? Because they are still connected to the divine web called instinct. With us, because we were cut off from instinct by the age of three, we have no clue. We have no clue. We don't know what we're supposed to eat. We don't know how we're supposed to sleep. We don't know what we're supposed to do. We're walking around saying, what's the meaning of life? What do I like to go to bed at 2 a.m.? We're, we're completely con cut off from nature and we have no clue. We've built all these artificial structures called cities, ur ur urban things. Um, it turns out that being a primary consumer, like um, all the land mammals that have horizontally moving jaws with cheeks, lips, muscular tongues, very long intestines, these kinds of things. We don't have the apparatus to kill. If we want to kill and eat a dead animal or eat a live animal, we're going to have to get a tool because we were not designed by nature for it. So when you look at omnivores, animals that eat everything, they all have a snout. Let's see some famous omnivores. A bear, a rat, a pig, a wild boar. They've got snouts because they have to be able to kill in, in, during the times that they don't have access to anything else other than, dead, than animals. So we were not designed in any way at all to be able to kill and rend. Neither do we ever look at an animal walking in the field and go, hmm. Lions do, cheetahs do, we don't. And neither do we come upon a corpse and say, I'm taking that home. It's against our, even though we've been enculturated, it's against our fundamental instincts. So what is food? So ba let's get down to a more fundamental question. What is food for any organism? Food is the a substance that that organism will take in and it can be converted, transmuted into the, at, the flesh and blood or whatever it is, plant material. So it's going to be able to take in this substance and convert it into its living structure. That which cannot be converted is going to cause harm unless you get rid of it because it's going to get in the way. We can define broadly as poison. So we got food and poison. Food can be transmuted, poison cannot, you've got to get rid of it. So if you look at that definition, you'd have to think about what, what are most people eating? 98% poison. Now, let's say you take something like broccoli, right, which is full of things that can be transmuted into human flesh and blood. Now, what is in the food, what is in the broccoli that is so important? Well, in addition to what we have identified as macronutrients, you know, carbs, proteins, and fats, and micronutrients such as vitamins and minerals, there's another element in this food that is absolutely essential, and it's called life. It's the spark of life, and that spark of life comes from light.